Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman, and we've talked a lot on the channel about cutting the cord from your cable television provider, but what about your telephone? So today we're going to take a look at a box from OB High. This is called their OB200, and we looked at an older version of this box a little while ago, and if you're in the United States, what's cool about this is that it bridges to your Google Voice account, but if you are not in the United States, there are a bunch of other voice over IP services that it's compatible with, so we'll look at some of your international options with this device, and then the second half of the video, I'm going to do a deeper dive into Google Voice because I think if you're getting frustrated with your landline, uh, Google Voice here in the U.S. is free and I think it's going to solve a lot of your problems in the uh, course of correcting all of your monthly bills as well. Now, I do want to mention in the interest of full disclosure that I paid for this with my own funds. It costs about $47. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review and no one is reviewing this content before it is posted. All right, so let's take a closer look at the hardware now. There actually isn't much to this and this has actually become a very mature technology, believe it or not, this connecting uh, old telephones to voice over IP. You plug in the power over here, you attach up this uh, Ethernet cable to your router, and uh, then you plug in the phone over here and you're ready to go. To set it up, you actually pick up your phone and dial a number. It then connects over the internet to OB High servers to register the box on their network, and you can actually use their directory to call other OB High boxes. If you bought two of these things and sent one to a friend across the globe, uh, you can just pick up your phone and dial their OB High number and get them on the phone and talk to them, just like you would in the old days with a, a regular telephone service. So really pretty simple, except the dial tone is coming out of this box and not from your phone company. Pretty cool. Uh, you can also connect it up if you wanted to, because this is analog phones. Uh, you can pretty much punch it down into your home phone wiring and replace your traditional landline with this and use this as your primary phone device. Now, although this does have Google Voice stamped on the front of the box, it's their main selling point here in the U.S. It's actually compatible with a lot more. Uh, in fact, you can have up to four different voice over IP providers configured on the same box. And anytime uh, any of those providers that you're using gets a call for you, it will ring your phone. And likewise, you can uh, dial codes before you make a call to have those calls routed over your desired uh, network, essentially, when you want to make an outgoing call. So kind of cool. You can have four different providers uh, routing through the box in addition to the OB High provider as well. Lots of configuration options. Now, this is what the internal configuration screen looks like. It is very complex. There are a lot of options that uh, don't make a lot of sense to me or anyone else. So you really have to go through uh, OB High's uh, website to do all of this stuff to get it working uh, in the simplest way. But uh, once you're done, I can basically just pick up my phone here, uh, dial my cell phone, for example, and in a second here, it will start ringing uh, through my Google Voice account because I configured this one as my uh, primary dial out facility here. So you can hear my phone is already ringing here and uh, I can pick up the phone and uh, make a call just like I would any other telephone except it's routing through my free Google Voice account. And here in the United States, I can call anywhere in the country for free with no long distance charges and no monthly fee either. And likewise, if I were to call the number right now, I can then ring the phone here and uh, get calls in as well. And uh, that is pretty much all there is to it. You pick up the phone, dial a number, or get a call when the phone rings. And again, if you wire this into your home phone network, uh, it will just work and ring all your phones just like the phone company does now. Now, I did want to switch gears a little bit now and talk about Google Voice and how it might work as a, a really good alternative to paying the phone company for your phone service because uh, what Google Voice is is a completely free service here in the United States from Google and it allows you to attach a phone number to your Google account. So people can call that number. You can have it configured to ring all of your phones. So for example, I had it uh, set up when I used to have a day job. I had it ring my office phone, my home phone, and my uh, cell phone all at the same time in addition to my uh, Google Hangouts app on my computer too. So I get my calls everywhere, ring all the phones at the same time. Uh, but there's a lot of configuration options to it because you can actually, uh, based on groups of people or even specific individuals, uh, determine what that person will do to your phones when they call. So, for example, if my uh, mother calls me, she can ring all my phones, but uh, perhaps a coworker can only get my phone to ring on my desk because I don't want to hear from them uh, after the end of the workday, for example. So there's a lot of different ways you can configure Google Voice, and you can even set it up so that the only people who can call you are, are people that you designate. So if you don't want to ever hear another junk call again, uh, you can configure it to just route everything to voicemail unless they're in a specific group of people uh, based on their caller ID. It is really powerful stuff. And 
And uh, it's really, it was really kind of sitting in this limbo zone for a while because Google really didn't uh, indicate as to whether or not they're going to keep the service operating. They hadn't really updated things in a while. And then after the first of the year this year, 2017, uh, they did a refresh to their interface. And that means hopefully that uh, they'll continue working on the product as we move through the year here because it is really great and it's completely free. In fact, not only is the service free, you get a phone number for free, but uh, all of the calls you make within the United States are free and they also have some pretty reasonable international rates. And I think if you open up an account uh, here in the US, when you go and travel, you can take that number with you and uh, use it just like we're using it here. In fact, I bet you, you could probably plug in this device overseas and have uh, calls be made to it uh, from your local exchange, yet uh, can reach you in China or anywhere else you might be, provided those uh, countries aren't blocking those kinds of services. So I did uh, block out a lot of this stuff because I could not show you all my uh, personal Google Voice stuff. I trust all of you subscribers, but who knows who's out there, so I figured I would blur out uh, some of the important things here. But this is the new interface, and uh, what I've got here is a, a login screen that has all of my messages uh, centralized here, so you can get text messages on this. Uh, you can make calls through the interface as well as get your voicemails on here. And in fact, what I did with my phone, my cell phone, is that I have it routing all of my uh, voicemail calls over to Google Voice. So if I don't pick up my cell phone after four or five rings, uh, the voicemail rolls over to my Google Voice account and everything comes into my Gmail account very nicely centrally located. It really is pretty useful. And uh, you can operate everything through the interface here or you can do it directly from your Gmail if you want. And that's why I have so many voicemail messages. I usually just go through my uh, Gmail to get them. But it archives them forever. Uh, so you don't have to worry about the leading messages. And again, really nice way to integrate uh, your voicemail into your email along with text messages also if you want to handle it that way. Now the way calls are made on Google Voice when you're not using the OBHI device for example is that uh, you start the call on your computer and then it rings your phone uh, then you pick up the phone and then that call gets made to whoever you are calling. So it's a little bit of an extra step when you are not uh, plugged into your OBHI device here but that's what's cool about the OBHI is it allows you to make a normal call like you would if you just picked up the phone but uh, generally Google Voice even when using their app requires a little bit of an extra step to uh, uh, type in the number and then wait for Google Voice to call you so you can complete that outgoing call. Incoming calls though are uh, ringing directly to the device itself. I can have multiple uh, numbers configured and uh, any which number I want to have ring at certain times or for certain people can do that. You do have to have a number, a real number to link it up with when you set it up. They will not give you a phone number unless you have a cell phone or a uh, landline to connect it to. So just bear that in mind before you get going. Now let me just add one more thing though on making out outgoing calls because there is a way that you can actually make the call with your Google Voice account through your computer which is to use the Google Hangouts app and once you have a, a Google Voice account configured when you do a free phone call through the Hangouts app the caller ID will come back to your Google Voice number when uh, you make those outgoing calls. So there are some options for getting everything working. Now as cool as this interface is uh, right now it is masking all the powerful features. What you have to do is click on the hamburger icon and then go over to uh, Legacy Google Google Voice in order to uh, get the really cool stuff configured. So uh, this brings you back to the old interface. This is actually the way it looked pretty much when it first uh, was introduced. It still all works, uh, but you can then uh, go in and configure some of the uh, filtering settings here. And uh, you can see I've got over 1,900 voicemails stored on my thing since I started using it, which is really cool because you can uh, retain a copy of every voicemail you ever got versus my uh, cell phone provider, which only gives me a handful of them that I can save before it runs out and doesn't let anybody else leave leave another message. So I really like it for that uh, archival purpose here. So I'm going to click on settings here and you can see what uh, these settings look like. So the first one here are the phones that you can configure and uh, right now I've got it set to go to my home and my uh, mobile phone as well as my Google chat. But you'll notice right now that uh, home and mobile are checked on which means that by default it's going to ring these two numbers but not the Google chat number. And it, I could even turn all of these off if I wanted to and just have everything uh, go straight to voicemail. In fact, there is some scheduling options that you can set up to uh, make it only ring at certain times of day. Now, if I go over here to my uh, home phone, I can go in further and configure specific options. So right now you can see it's uh, set to uh, use a custom ring schedule. So I can just do it like a weekday thing where I could say never ring on the weekdays. Maybe it's just I don't, I don't want it to have it ring during the workday. I can just have it ring on the weekends, for example. I could also do a custom schedule, which is what I did here, was to have the phone ring between, or um, yeah, do not ring the phone between 11.30 p.m. and 7 a.m. so I'm not woken up. 
uh, but I can also on the weekends uh, set it for a different time. And then if somebody really important calls, like maybe a family member who might have an emergency in the middle of the night, I can give them the ability to override that schedule. So if my mother calls again, uh, she can get through, but nobody else can who's not in my family list, for example. So that is how you can configure just on a global scale uh, how your phones operate. Uh, voicemail is pretty self-explanatory, but what's cool is that you can have multiple greetings based on different groups of people. So in this screen here is where you would record all of your uh, voicemail greetings that you'll be configuring. You can also do like a vacation alert if you wanted to do something like that. Uh, you can then have the uh, voicemail notifications forward to your email, for example. Uh, you can also have it send a text message if you want. When you do get a voicemail, uh, you again can turn those things on or off. Uh, there is, of course, the famous voicemail transcription, and uh, Google's automated systems will do that for you. But if you're not comfortable with the Google computer listening to all of your messages, you can turn that option off. But I have found the transcription to be really useful, especially when I'm on a plane, because I'm getting my voicemails uh, on an aircraft. Maybe I don't have a lot of bandwidth to listen to the audio file or maybe I just don't want to boot up my computer to listen to it or something, I can get the text on my phone and know whether or not it's an important message uh, that I have to, to get to because it is uh, good enough that you can actually understand what the person is trying to say through their transcription. Over here on calls, you have the option to screen every incoming call. And uh, what that'll do is every time it gets a number that it's never received before, it will ask the person to leave their name. And that usually is a good way of filtering out a lot of uh, junk calls because if they don't leave a name, it generally, I think, goes right to voicemail or it might trigger some of their spam stuff. But uh, what'll happen though is that once that caller makes their name recording the first time, they will never have to do it again. So I've been using Google Voice for who knows how long, maybe seven or eight years. And uh, if somebody called me way back then, uh, that voice recording will carry forward every time they call me. So it's not a real nuisance to your friends and family because they just have to record that once and you're done. A uh, caller ID can, can be configured to display the caller's number on your cell phone and uh, landline when somebody calls, or you can have it display the Google Voice number. Uh, you can set do not disturb here, so you can knock out any phone calls from uh, hitting your phones for a certain length of time. You can configure that uh, by hours, days, or whatever else you want to do. Uh, they also have some options here for how you configure uh, call options for uh, switching between devices. You can also record incoming calls if you hit the four key on your phone. I've never done that before, but you can do something like that. And Google also has some spam filtering to uh, weed out junk calls and voicemails too, and text messages in addition to all of that. Now, the real power, though, of Google Voice comes in on this next screen, which is groups and circles. And some of this terminology is left over from the old Google Plus days, but uh, bear with me because this still does work even with all of the new Google contact stuff. So basically what happens here is that I can set defaults based on uh, the types of calls that come in. So for example, an anonymous caller, somebody coming in without uh, any caller ID at all can be configured just not to ring any phones at all. But maybe I want to stop accepting calls from anybody I don't know because we're at a stage now where people are spoofing caller ID all the time and every call you get has caller ID even if it's a junk call. So what I can do here, for example, is go to all contacts and check off all of these boxes. So basically what's going to happen here is that any call that I get with a caller ID, it's just going to ring and ring and ring and not uh, ring my phone on my desk or any of the other phones that I've got connected to it. So for example, if I call right now uh, from this phone, even though I've got this thing hooked up to my OB high, I should be hearing the phone ring when uh, the cell phone makes a call. Uh, this phone is just not going to ring because right now I've said to Google Voice, do not answer the, or ring the phone under any circumstances uh, from a number that I have not specifically given you permission to ring my phone for. So right now, if I turn the speakerphone on here, uh, you can hear that I am ringing my number, but the phone on my desk here isn't ringing at all. Well, let's take it a step further now and make this a number that we can accept. Now, just to recap here, what we did is we said, any call that comes in, do not ring my phones. That's why all these are now checked off under all contacts. And uh, that means if somebody calls, they're going to get a ring, but it's going to eventually just drop them off into my voicemail versus disturbing me with a phone ringing. But if I want somebody to call me, there are ways to allow them to do that. And we can do that by creating groups. And what happens is these groups override what you have set in this section over here. So for example, I have a group called testing. And anytime I get a call in from somebody who's part of the testing group, uh, it will ring these phones, whereas somebody else will not. And that is how you're able to decide who gets to ring your phones versus who just gets sent to voicemail. And you do that through the label function on the new interface of 
Google Contacts. And you can see here we have the testing label set up here. And you can see I made myself a temporary contact record with a temporary phone number. So you can try to call this, but you will not reach me. Uh, and if I go over here to more actions, you can see that I added them to the testing tag, or they call it a label. And these are labels like you might see in Gmail, but Google Voice still interprets these labels from the new Contacts app as groups. So now that Lon Temp with that temporary phone number is in the group, if I go and try to call my number now, uh, we should hear the phone ring because it's going to override the default setting. So here you go, my phone is ringing and I can answer the call because this caller ID number is one that I approve to go through and that is how the groups work. They basically override the default settings and you can see uh, just how powerful this is because uh, now you can really have a lot of control over who rings your phone versus not. You can make it basically a opt-in on your end as to who can ring you versus something right now with the regular phone company. Anybody who calls me can ring my phone and I'm really not too crazy about that. I want more control and Google Voice gives me that control. You really got a lot of granular control as to who can contact you and how and I can even set up separate voicemail messages for these groups. So for example, I can have uh, family members know for example, that I'm traveling through a voicemail greeting that I might leave for them, but anyone else calling me gets the standard greeting. So there's really a lot of options and depth to this service, and it's free. And what's cool about uh, using an OBI device like this one is that uh, you can basically bridge this into your home phone as well. So you can have your home phone uh, obey the same rules as your Google Voice stuff does because it really is just another extension of your Google Voice account. Really cool stuff, and these are really helpful boxes that uh, don't cost all that much, but uh, give you the free power of Google Voice uh, for your home phone network and really act as a, a pretty significant cord cutting option that not only wipes out your phone bill, uh, but also gives you a lot more power in controlling how people reach you as well. So good stuff from OBI as well as from Google Voice. I don't know if Google Voice is going to come back to uh, being a service that Google is really focused on, but it appears as though they're going to keep it alive. There was some concern it was going to go away at some point. Uh, there was rumors back a few years ago that they were going to knock out support for the OBI boxes, but uh, then Google Voice or Google and them worked it out, and now they are uh, silk screening that logo onto the box here. So I'm hoping that this means that it is a solidified option for people because this really does uh, add a tremendous amount of power to your home telephone. This is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters, including Gold Level supporters Mark Bollinger and Brian Miller. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.